I have spent well over the past 6 months using the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and now that the S24 Ultra is out, I am going to break down what really differentiates them and answer the question how much better is the S24 Ultra over the S23. First let's take a look at the design of these two phones. Now at first glance they look pretty similar right? But look closer and you'll see Samsung actually made enough changes to the design of this phone. The most obvious one you'll likely notice first is the material. It's now titanium very similar to what Apple used with their latest iPhones. Now if you're thinking great Samsung must have also improved the weight of the Ultra like Apple did with their 15 Pro Max last year unfortunately that is not the case. The S24 Ultra is just about as heavy as the S23. Now a larger change that Samsung made to the S24's exterior design that's probably harder to pick up on camera is with the display. Not only did Samsung finally embrace a flat display with the S24 Ultra but they made some significant improvements to this display as well. The display now can go as bright as 2600 nits which is way more than the 1750 nits of the S23 Ultra's display and it is very noticeable in direct sunlight it's seriously bright. Another improvement to the display that's quite noticeable is the new anti-glare coating. Samsung partnered with Corning to develop a better glass material called Gorilla Armor. It's 4 times more scratch resistant and 3 times better with drops. On their site, Corning mentioned they worked significantly to reduce the micro scratches as well which Jerry Rig everything did confirm in his teardown of the phone. Samsung also announced a new feature with this display called Adaptive Color Tone which will automatically adjust the white balance based on your ambient lighting conditions to make the colors appear more natural. Also look at what happens when I slow down the frame rate between the S23 and S24 Ultra's display panels. What we are looking the display rapidly turning on and off. This display technology is called pulse width modulation or PWMM for short and even though you can't see the OLED panels do this in normal use, your eyes can actually still perceive this rapid movement if the frequency of the PWM is low enough which can cause all sorts of problems for people like Adachis, Disney and more. With the S24 Ultra, Samsung has increased their PWM to 492Hz, up from 240Hz in the S23 Ultra and this hopefully should improve the experience of looking at the display for those sensitive to pulse width modulation. Some other smaller changes you'll notice when holding both of these phones are that Samsung now has two microphones at the top and a smaller hole for the S Pen to be stored at the bottom. Alright, so those are a lot of the things with the exterior of the phone. But now let's talk about the software on the inside. One of the biggest changes Samsung brought to this year's SS24 models is what the company calls Galaxy AEAAI. Now I know what you're thinking oh gosh what kind of gimmicky useless features did Samsung market for this Galaxy AI. But actually the features that make up Galaxy A are, A are pretty useful like call assist which provides you real time voice translations while you are on a call with someone who's speaking in another language. Samsung also debuted a new interpreter mode which will translate in person conversations in real time. And yes, all of this is processed locally on the device. Galaxy AI also gets you chat assist which will help you translate text messages into another language and even help you rewrite the tone of a message which uses Google's new gaming in an on device model. Galaxy AI also powers Photomoji which lets you turn photos into emojis. It will automatically summarize your group messages in Android Auto Recap lectures and meetings with transcript assist found in the native voice recorder app and it can even separate different speakers. Samsung Note Assist can easily clean up your handwriting, organize your thoughts 
and summarize your notes too. And then they circle the search. Look how cool this is. It's a powerful new way to use Google search across Android devices where you tap the bottom bar and then circle anything that you see on the screen to search it. It works in videos too and is pretty great. Samsung also debuted a new competitor to Google's magic editor called Generative Edit, Edit which allows you to move a reposition or remove parts of an image. Now the last major difference between these two phones is their camera system. The S24 Ultra processes photos compared to the S23 Ultra, which I was not expecting. Just look at this photo. This photo. See how bright the background is, but also there isn't a lot of contrast. Alright, now look at the S24 Ultra's version of this photo. The background and part of the steeple on the right side are illuminated, but the rest is in shadow. It's much closer to what you'd get out of a DSLR camera, not to mention closer to how the steeple appeared in real life. This new photo processing that comes with the S24 series this year is powered by what Samsung calls their Pro Visual Engine. It powers a new suite of AI powered camera tools, some of which I've mentioned already like the Generative Edit. And it will help you get better shots by improving noise performance, color reproduction and HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range Imaging. Over the images produced by the S24 Ultra are slightly warmer and have a more natural contrast across the board they just look a bit less processed compared to what I get with the S23 Ultra. And for the first time Super HDR and Video Stabilization are actually supported within the camera of the Snapchat and Instagram apps. So that's what's new with the S24 Ultra and what it does better than the S23 Ultra. There are quite a few features that Samsung has added that make it a pretty substantial upgrade over the S23 Ultra. Now this isn't a situation where I'd say yes, you absolutely need to upgrade your S23 Ultra to an S24 Ultra, but if you want to play around with Samsung's new Galaxy A features and don't mind spending $600 to $700 after trading in an S23 like I did, like ID3 I did so far. I think you'll be pretty happy with this phone, but I can't give you my final verdict on the S24 Ultra. If you want to see more comparison videos like this, make sure you are subscribed to the channel and smash that like button if you like this video. I'm Ali. Thanks for watching.